Now, the Emirates MBD Global Business Series is a one-of-its-kind occasion to meet business icons, self-made billionaires, and corporate executives who influence the business community in this region. The sole purpose of this event is to inspire entrepreneurs and senior executives with profound insights and guidance from these icons, which will help in climbing the ladder towards success. Now, the successful journey of Intelligent SME wouldn't be possible without the consistent support of our sponsors, partners, and well-wishers. So a special note of gratitude to our strategic alliance partners, Dubai SME, and our title sponsor, Emirates MBD. We also thank our gold sponsor, Porsche Center Dubai, and Nabuda Automobiles. Our technology partner, SAP Middle East and North Africa, our wellness partner, VLCC, along with our alliance partners, Western Union Business Solutions, Al Nabuda Insurance Brokers, Petrochem Middle East, AIG SME Insurance Solutions, and our media partners, College Times, Star Plus, and Life OK. In addition, we'd like to thank the Bryce Group for supporting our initiative. The Bryce Buzz is an iconic tower located in Noida Sports City. Offering impeccable luxury, this project is all set to redefine India's skyline. For more details, please contact Sanjeev if you'd like the latest offers. Now, future projects. Building on the success that Emirates MBD Global Business Series and the Global App Summit have generated in Dubai, SPI Group is proud to launch the SME World Summit in March 2014. We aim to provide one of the largest platforms to connect the entire business community, enable companies to share values and vision for boosting growth, creating tangible value by meeting potential business leads, understanding successful business models, and maintenance, and in short, take the industry to the next level. Now it's time for our felicitation. So please, can I call to the stage the chief guest this evening, Mr. Rizwan Sajan. Please, would you come to the stage? Now he will be felicitated by Mr. Thomas Wergus, Head of Assets Business Emirates MBD, and Mr. Shantanu AP, CEO of the SPI Group. Mr. Shantanu will also be giving Mr. Sajan a gift, courtesy of Porsche Center Dubai. Thank you. And now, so that the evening can get underway, can I please welcome Mr. Tariq Qureshi, who is the founder and CEO of Vantage Holdings. He's also the media representative and advisor for Bloomberg TV and multimedia in the Middle East. Tariq's media and broadcasting experience includes radio, TV, print, panelist, and moderating specialized conferences internationally. Mr. Tariq Qureshi, may I call you to the stage? Have a good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. It's quite interesting. Today is probably the most uh, full day we have had uh, in this event. And I think that is congratulations to Mr. Rasuan Sajan and his popularity and his, uh, the fact that he has attracted so many people uh, to come and join us here today. This whole series started exactly one year ago, last October. And the essence of the series was essentially to talk to business entre businessmen and entrepreneurs and people who have almost started from nothing and made a fortune, got to the top of their businesses, got to the top of, the, of their organizations. And the stories that we have come up with we have been outstanding. And those are the stories that help to inspire us and help to give us that support uh, when we have difficult times in our business. There's a lot of learning and there's a lot of connect connection with some of their experiences. <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, what are the differences between the various leaders that have come in here? 
There are a lot of differences, but there are a few similarities. And those similarities are the ones that really differentiates successful people from <coughs> not very successful people. And amongst them are things like hard work and dedication and persistence and focus. And we will today talk about a lot of those things. And, and to see that Mr. Rizwan Sajan came in here 20, just over 20 years ago, and when he first came down uh, as a young man, as an 18-year-old uh, guy who came down to this part of the world, he was earning only about 500 dirhams. And today, we, we will talk about how his story evolved and how we can move forward with that. Now, what we're going to do is you see some of these beautiful photographs that are there. And, and Mr. Rizwan, he's a, not only a businessman, he's also a family man, a man who has taken and led a very balanced life. And I think we will see all of that. And you see some of the pictures there. What we're now going to do is to show you a two, three minute video, which just sets the tone and sets the background of the Danube group and him as a person and as a leader. If not, we'll just have fun and enjoy the conversation. By the way, as you can see, I have no notes, I have no papers. This is going to be a heart-to-heart -heart chat. Neither does he, so both of us together will really engage and talk about uh, some of the wonderful stories. Are we making progress? Right at the center of the world lies a city where dreams are floated. Dubai, a city that has given birth to many dreams and shape numerous success stories. One such story began in the year 1993. A small trading shop with just two employees and a determined entrepreneur started business in the naive area of Deira. Through sheer hard work, optimism, and the drive to grow, the visionary entrepreneur, Rizwan Sajan, turned the shop into the number one building material company in the region. Architecting the success of the award-winning Danube Group. Today, Danube is the name in building materials, construction, shop fitting materials, and home interior products. With presence across the Middle East region, India, and China, and turning in over 2 billion dirhams in revenue annually. Danube houses over 25,000 products under one roof. To date, the Danube Group maintains over 40 showrooms across the GCC region and India. Danube's modern and highly equipped warehousing facility inside Jabal Ali Free Zone is one of the biggest in the region, spread over a space of 5 million square feet. Danube also recently inaugurated its industrial complex facility in Techno Park Jafsa. Danube credits its dedicated staff as being the co-writers of Danube's success story. Today, Danube has a staff strength of 2,000 people. Danube has also made significant progress in its contribution to the public sector, witnessed recently with the opening of the new Danube metro station. Testament to this philosophy was the inception of its home interior retail franchise, Buildmark. Another innovation that's put the Danube Group among the foremost business groups of the region. While the company's initiatives have been rewarded with financial success, they have also been recognized with numerous distinctions and awards. The Dubai Quality Appreciation Award, two MRM Awards, Dubai Logistics and Supply Chain Award, and Visionary of the Year Award for Rizwan Sajan are among a few of the recognitions they have received. As a responsible corporate citizen, Danube believes in nurturing young talent. In partnership with the Association of Professional Interior Designers, Danube launched the Danube Students Interior Design Competition and Awards to provide a platform for promising interior designers across the GCC. The company recently announced the formation of their new cricket team, Danube Lions. Danube may have achieved plenty, but this is just a part of the journey. It all started with one dream, and 
Danube is now well on its way to fulfilling the dreams and aspirations of many. Uh, before we move on with the, the core of the, the session today, let's just look at uh, some of the early uh, pictures and, and photographs. Just as a, what, where were you, what were you doing up there? Were you a student this there? This is the photograph I've taken in Los Angeles. I've gone before marriage. That, okay. was, the, that was the time Samira hooked me or I hooked Samira. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And the one on the right, dance, also? Uh, yeah, the same one. The same, same one, okay. Yeah. Same, during the same time. This is, after that we got married. Uh, 1987, I believe. I see. And this is your son? This is my son when he was born. Uh, very interesting story about his son. Uh, <coughs> he's not here today because he is working. He's at an exhibition. And it just shows the work ethic of the family, that it was more important to go there and represent the family at business rather than just here. And I think that is a very special thing to see that people are so dedicated to the jobs. Yeah, in fact, he called me before I was coming for the event. He said, Dad, I'm going to miss you, but you told me this exhibition is more important, so I went, and I'm <laughs> feeling so sad about it. Right. <coughs> uh, this must be a very proud moment when uh, you met Sheikh Mohammed and he gave you yeah, the absolutely. quality award. Yeah, Can you remember that? Yeah, this is the Dubai Quality Awards we got, and I was a lucky one to be photographed with him. So he's my inspiration all the time. So. Wonderful. And that's another one, which is when you opened the Danube metro station? That's correct, yeah. Uh, are you proud of that? Do you, very, very proud. I you mean, enjoy yeah. everybody stopping uh, at the Danube station? Uh, than yeah, and else. not only that, you know, the, the feeling which you get because the only, I believe, the only expat company uh, who has a metro station in their name. Right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just a little uh, a montage of <coughs> a few pictures and a few images uh, of Mr. Mr. Rizwan Sajan. To dive straight in, sir, uh, what one moment in your life, in your early stages, defined what you are today when you were a young man, a young person? It's the, uh, my father, uh, who was my mentor in the earlier stage, uh, he used to go to, he was working in Nathani Steel. And I remember that when he used to come from office, he used to discuss with me his problems in the office and how he used to cope up and what are the challenges he used to face and how uh, that, that guidance which I got from him was a lot, I would say. And then definitely after my father's death, all the responsibility came on me. I was only 16 years old at that time. So that changed my whole life to what I am today. Let's take a flashback even before that. You started working when you were about 12 years old. Uh, tell us about that and, and were you one of those young kids who just wants to do business and, and have your own lemonade stand or uh, how, how did it come together? See, I was born in a lower middle class uh, family. When I say lower middle class means we had the basics. My father could send me to a good school but he could not provide me a car to go to the school or could not provide me a motorbike to go to the school. He, he, he gave me the basics which was required, even the tuition money we didn't have to pay. Uh, so. The college or the school which I was studying, uh, it was a good school, so my friends who were there, they were coming from a little richer background, their parents were a little richer background, their lifestyle was a little different. I knew that my father could not afford to give me more money than what he has already given me. So to live to the lifestyle of my friends, I used to always work that little extra. I, I don't know, somehow it had, I had it that in my genes that I have to make that extra money and even at 12 years, uh, you, I was selling firecrackers, I have sold books, I have delivered milk also. So uh, I used to make that extra two, three hundred rupees so that I could live to the standard of my other friends. So did that define your, your, your strength that you, uh, that you see in the, in the latter part of your life? Did that define you or were there other things beyond that? I think that defined me because you know that, that never the feeling of uh, doing something to, you know, like uh, normally one would say that why would you go and deliver milk in the morning? But I said that that's the time I, may, uh, I got that job which was giving me 150 rupees and it was not disturbing my school or something like that. Uh, I took that job. I mean, I, I went in the bicycle and I delivered the milk to the people's house. Would you recommend that for a lot of parents that are here to do exactly the same for their children? I, I don't say that they should do the same thing, but uh, if required, why not? 
I mean, there should not be uh, it's something like uh, dignity of labor should come into your mind that you should not do this work or you should not do that work. Today also, I, I don't have that. I mean, I would walk into any uh, any warehouse and ask questions to the people that what's what you're doing and how you're doing the business. Uh, so, I, if if you are able to uh, keep that ego away, uh, I, I, I think you'll be always successful. Were you a good Were you a good student at school? I was not a good student, to be honest. Okay. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> I was back, 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 back <laughs> <laughs> um, What? Why weren't you a good student? Obviously, you're an extremely intelligent man. Uh, but what was taking you away from your studies? Uh, I was a very naughty kid, to be honest. Which is good. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I was more of more interested in, in the elections rather than studying. Right. I was the CR of the college. Uh, the teacher, when he used to come to the college, he used to first say, Mr. Rizwan, and there were a couple of other friends, please go out of the room because you're going to disturb my class. Right. So this is how I was in the class. <laughs> so was it that, uh, because, you know, when you look at people like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or most, most people, they drop out of university uh, to actually become really successful as entrepreneurs because universities tend to sometimes <coughs> slow you down and, uh, and put you into a box. Is that something that you felt? That, no, that was not that. I always wanted to study and uh, because that was my father's dream that, you know, I should pass and uh, uh, get that. I used to get about 60% marks, but my father was never happy with that 60% marks which I used to get. Uh, it so happened that uh, my father expired and I had to leave the school. So I, believe, I, I felt at that time that my priority is my family to take care of my mother, my sister, my brother and uh, I would rather concentrate on my work rather than studying. At that point in time, when, uh, <coughs> at the age of... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, not feeling well today, so please excuse me. At the age of 16, uh, sadly, when your father passed away, you uh, uh, were working, studying at the same time. Uh, could you just give us uh, a scenario <coughs> of what you went through and how that... and then we can move forward to the rest of your life? Uh, everything was going nice. I was studying in a good school. Um, and all of a sudden, my father met with an accident when I was only 16 years old. And that was a big, big, uh, you know, jolt for me and the family because uh, we were living, uh, in any case, hand to mouth. And when my father was there, like whatever salary he was making, we were surviving on that salary he was making. So when he died, uh, there was no way, uh, income which we had where we could, uh, survive. Even my uncles who were the close uncles, they also did not really bother to come uh, to help us in the manner. Uh, I remember the first month's ration we did not have when he died because there was no money to buy the ration. Uh, there was a friend of mine, his dad came and he provided that first month ration. All started, responsibility came on me. My father was working in a company called Nathani Steel. He was working there for the last 20 years. Uh, he was in a good position over there, uh, well respected in the company. So the company uh, took me, uh, although I was only 16 years old, but they knew the, the financial position I had. So they gave me an offer, they gave me a job in that company. Now my problem was I was studying in a college and I used to go in the college. So I had to tell, request my professor that I have to work in this company. So I will not be able to attend all the lectures and I will be only attending till 10 o'clock and after that I will go to Nathani Steel. So from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock I was in the college and then from 10 o'clock I used to move around, move to the Nathani Steel. And then very soon after that you got a job offer to come to Kuwait at the age of 18. Uh, tell us about your emotions then, leaving home, uh, coming see, to a new place. I, when my father expired I was trying my different avenues as to ask my different uncles, different friends as to how do I uh, you know, if anybody can help me. And this uncle of mine who was in Kuwait, I wrote a letter to him that, uh, you know, my father has passed away and if there any way you can offer me a job in Kuwait. My uncle was doing very well. He was a millionaire over there. He was doing in the same building material business. He wrote me a letter saying that, Rizwan, you are only 16, so I cannot give you a job or I cannot make your visa when you are 16. And you will have to wait until you become 18. So when I saw the letter, I felt that this is, you know, one of the other kind of uncle who does not want to help me or just trying to give me some excuse by just saying that I'm not 18. So I started living my life 
and trying to survive in that Bombay competition or whatever uh, little uh, I could do. And on my 18th birthday, I received a letter from the same uncle of mine saying, Rizwan, you had asked me for a job and this is the job I'm giving you. So it was like the shock of my life because a person who was not doing well, he got this offer. So I was very happy. <clears throat> and that was the turning point, I would say, in my life. And he, he gave you that chance um, and you took it with both hands and I think you made him proud because you came in as a sales assistant. Yeah, he, he, he is the one who, you know, he, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'll never be able to forget him because he is the one who took me in this house. He kept me in his house. Normally, you know, one would give a job, he, will, he would keep me in some boarding, uh, in, in some other lodging place. But